I just do a video on how did the pe people of the Pacific Ocean navigate. So those Pacific Islands, like you get an idea, it covers pretty much half of the globe. I and mean, we have these far-flung, very separated islands. I recently did a post about the potential of cross-Atlantic trade and a phrase but uh, so you see the Atlantic so the, uh, for instance the, um, tobacco and cocaine in Egypt but it, no doubt it's it's a large ocean the Atlantic but you sort of get not so depending on what route you take it's not so far in comparison to get from here over to here uh, but when you compare it to the size of the Pacific and given the fact that uh, there's no doubt that uh, you know, Samoa, Tonga, Fiji uh, were uh, trading in communication with one another, and then even you consider Easter Island and that, uh, and these other places. Like this Pacific's just bloody huge. And how did how did they do this? And uh, to respond to a comment, uh, Donny Darko X, I think it was, um, but uh, all it reminded me of something I was looking into a while ago, uh, the Matang, but. Uh, so how did they navigate? Okay, when we, when I was a boy, we went to Fiji, also to Hawaii. We went on a on a motorboat. We took a day trip to a smaller island to have like a sort of barbecue thing. I remember just being freaked out because they had like they didn't know they weren't working on a compass. They just sort of took off. We, you know, we spent on a small boat going across. And how did they find this? Um, now that's within the Fiji island chains, but then you have again like Easter Island or as they call the Venice of the East and other places such as the Marshall Islands, Fiji, Tonga, Samoa. Uh, how you know, how did people navigate across these vast expanse of the Pacific? It like you know pretty much covers half the globe. So yeah, setting out across this ocean. Um, and firstly settling a new island so it, if you already know where the island is that's one thing but you know, how did these people have the you know the cojones to to go and to do this because it's it's you're you're risking your life because it's you can only have so much water maybe you can get a bit of water from catching fish or food but if you're not if you don't do it right it's a it's a it's a death sentence and so, and so how did they settle new islands as well uh with, with these very simple boats and no you know they didn't have a magnetic compass it certainly didn't have gps and yet they did this consistently and did it quite successfully and then managed um so again once you already know which direction and how to go but how did they find new islands this is also an intriguing question and again crossing the pacific in these canoes um so yeah how do you find in the vastness of this pacific ocean how do you find a small island, especially one that you you don't know that's there? So there, are, so you can navigate by the sun is an obvious one. Uh, you navigate by the moon, but you have to again, you can't just sort of oh, there's a moon because the moon and the sun are moving. You have to understand the way these things operate. So you have to have this knowledge to do this type of navigation. The same thing with the stars, and so, uh, but uh, for instance. Okay, what we have is those three stars of Orion's belt. They point at Sirius, which is the brightest star in the night sky. Star, not uh, not to be confused with uh, Venus or Jupiter or one of these other planets. But it's also worth noting, I suppose, that the shafts in the Great Pyramid um, are found to be pointing at Sirius, uh, the dog star, as it's called, on the nose of um, Canis Major, as well as to Alnitak in Orion's belt. So Orion's belt, this shaft would be leading off to Alnitak and the lower one to Sirius, a key thing for navigation. So apart from the sun, the moon and the stars, which will give you a direction, but how do you find an island, that, you, especially one that you don't know that's there? Even with the sun and the moon, I'll give you like a... You have to be... You can't be a degree off because uh, you travel one. De if you're one degree off over a hundred or two hundred or three hundred miles or a thousand miles or more, you're going to miss your target by a big distance. But one of the ways that they uh, did this was also through birds because birds would fly between the islands, and so you could use navig, um, especially if you understand the cycles of migration of these birds, 
you can follow them. Birds would often even settle on your canoe in mid-ocean as well, so that was another way that you could find it. So birds are one way to give you a better direction of where an island is, especially one that you don't know that is there. So again, seabirds and like gulls, will, you know, they, they don't live at sea, so albatross is not going to be so helpful, they live at sea, but uh, uh, gulls and these other migrating birds, they'll be a good way. Another way is that there are these natural sort of oil slicks that will happen, and even at night they'll turn a bit bioluminescent, but these are also signals from the islands because the rotting vegetation, for instance, on the islands will create these type of things. Even the uh, like a larger island that has a, uh, a river or a creek, the fresh water will come and it will create um, and leave different markings. So all these things together will also point you in, in that direction to find not just an existing island, but also maybe a new um, undiscovered island. The closer you'll get, you'll even start to see like leaf litter and, and bits of biomass, which have, uh, again, running off the creeks or running off the beaches and then leaving this trail, and then you can hone in and follow them. Uh, look, again, like uh, driftwood and stuff, again, will be another point. So the closer you get to to an island, the more you're going to see, especially, you know, not just more sort of rotten, but even fresher type of leaf matter, maybe even uh, dead animals or something as well, would be another clue. Yeah, but across this vast ocean, so again, that's it's still taking a big risk. But there's another, this is the point of the video, is this object called the Matang. And it was uh, knowledge... Uh, brilliant stuff that was almost lost and here are some examples of these matang and some are reconstructions um, but again this knowledge was uh, almost uh, lost so it was a uh, uh, pretty much down to one old guy in the Marshall Islands who still knew this and was recording it and then luckily uh, he he was found and he started to be recorded and then they started like a program for him to teach other youngsters in other, not just in the Marshall Islands and elsewhere, to preserve this uh, navigation tool and it's freaking brilliant. Um, now what is it? It's a, a matang, the matang which Polynesian boys learn to navigate over the trackless waters of the Pacific Ocean by studying the motions of waves defect, uh, deflected by islands. So Master navigators, again, without the astrolabe, the sextant, the compass, and, and uh, these other places, they they used this object. And so, uh, for instance, like all navigators, they used the stars as fixed points of reference. They understood the significance of stationary clouds. That's another point, yeah, because clouds will basically float over the top of an island. Uh, there will be like the big bodies of clouds moving, but if you can spot clouds that are stationary, well, that points you to an island. Uh, the presence of bird and flotsam, uh, that floating leaf matter, that type of stuff, are indications of nearby land. But most extraordinary of all, they had learned how to read and interpret the changing patterns created by ocean waves. A stone thrown into a pond will set up a series of ripples. Any object like a rock or even a mooring post will, which breaks the surface will affect, affect the pattern of ripples. Ponds or the Pacific Ocean, the same principle applies. Islands and atolls have the same effect as rocks and posts. The Polynesians have observed that when waves hit an island, some are reflected back in the direction from which they have come, while others are deflected at angles around the island and continue their passage in a modified form. The art of reading the waves was taught to Polynesian boys with the aid of the Matang, a web of interlock interlocking sticks which demonstrated all the basic patterns that wave waves can form when they are deflected by land. The adult navigator gauged these wave patterns entirely by his sense of touch. He would crouch in the bow of his canoe and literally feel every motion of the vessel. In this way, the original colonizers of Easter Island might have felt the presence of what was there before the new homeland was actually sighted. So, not just finding existing islands, but how did they settle these uh, undiscovered islands? Well, they could find them from a large distance away using this object and the knowledge that uh, went with it. So again, that's an illustration of it, but there we see uh, what they call like the uh, relibs. And so you'd be, you know, you'd understand the way that the currents and the winds are working. And 
why I can't quite uh, fathom it, but they were able to understand this uh, Caleb and the Rilib and the way that these waves were deflected. And before you could see it, you might not have the cloud there, you might not have the uh, flotsam, such, you know, uh, leaves or, or driftwood might not be there to go. It might not be the time for the bird, but you can, uh, for bird migrations, um, but with this, the Matang, they're able to navigate and almost certainly using this same information to settle undiscovered islands long before they see them. You, you don't just sort of drift across the Pacific think, hoping you're going to hit something because you're not, you're going to die. Uh, you have to know what you're doing when you're navigating and these guys were using this brilliant um, stuff and so these uh, uh, boats and to find a island chain or an individual island just out there, you know, it's not just a needle in the haystack, it's a a, a, a mountain of hay with a needle in there is to find an, uh, a new island and this is the way that they did it across this massive expanse of the Pacific using this matang and this knowledge that goes with it in combination with other um, uh, you know, birds, fl flotsam, um, these oil slicks, stationary clouds over the islands the sun and the moon, but even the sun, the moon and the stars will only tell you where to go if you know where you're going. Uh, it's how do you find this, these new islands and it's by, you know, this, we're losing touch with nature and some really basic principles. Um, and yeah, and now we have to add things to, but, uh, unfortunately, it just, yeah, sheer brilliance is. And so all these other trails and, and hints that they point to a new island, but this Matang, and this knowledge that goes with it and um, even the way so like our sense of smell is being ruined by chemicals but like for instance uh, you know people living in in the jungle for instance their sense of smell was heightened and it was a, a life or death thing and and so n not only we're we losing our problem solving ability because we just google it or ring up the you know ring something up and bring a crane in and we're losing our problem solving and and yeah, so this is how they did it. Amazing stuff. And I uh, hope you find this interesting, the Matang, that's, uh, if you want to go a little bit further. And I uh, hope you enjoyed. Have a good one.